up before you this day. We stand in acknowledgement that you are our source. We stand in appreciation of your goodness. Adoring you for your love towards us. Celebrating your faithfulness towards us. Lord, you have dealt very well with us. You've been truthful to us. You preserve our going out and our coming in. Even though there are things that we have no understanding about, yet your peace carries us through. Your peace assures us. Thank you. Thank you that we can call on your name. Thank you that we can lift up our voice and say thank you. Thank you for life. Thank you for this partner, wonderful partnership with us. We bless you for fellowshipping with us this morning. Ready to minister to us. Ready to feed us. Ready to refresh us. Ready to lift us up. And push us forward. We thank you that every sickness has no place. No disease has no has any place in any life. We thank you that you've taken sickness and disease away from our midst. And you have made us whole. You've given us health. And we bless you for that. We thank you that every yoke is destroyed. We have victory over every yoke, every plotting of the enemy, over every work of darkness over every work of unrighteousness, over every work of wickedness. Thank you for victory over that. Thank you for victory over that. And we bless you, Lord, that whatever the enemy meant for evil, you have turned it for our good. And all things, including our mistakes, are working together for our good because of the love that you have bestowed upon us. We thank you for every gifting, every ability, every grace that you have endowed us with. Thank you for the ministry of the Holy Spirit within us. Thank you for touching lives through us and with us. Thank you for making us your hands and your feet, your mouth. Thank you for making us your representatives even here on this earth. We give you praise. We give you praise. And we glorify you, Lord. You are awesome. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name. Amen. Please take your seats. And say hallelujah. Hallelujah. Well, we welcome you as across the nations. This is Liberty House in the National Church all the way from the USA. Coming to you live by way of YouTube and Facebook. In case you miss any portion of this uh, live stream, please go to our webpage, Liberty House. USA.org. Once again, Liberty House USA.org. Or go to our YouTube channel and type in Liberty House in the National Church. And uh, you can treat yourself to the videos that we have there so you will enrich your life and then um, you can be a blessing to society. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Well, we believe uh, our mission is to transform lives through the word of God. Amen. That is why we don't joke with the word. Amen. We believe in present truth. We believe in the pure, unadulterated word of God. Amen. And uh, we don't apologize when we teach and preach the pure word. Hallelujah. Amen. I'm a messenger of the Lord Jesus Christ, an agent of change and transformation. My mission here is to help you, to push you forward, help you in your walk with the Lord so you can be all that God wants you to be and do all that God wants you to do. In case I say anything that doesn't uh, sit quite well with you, please uh, don't fight me. Let's not fight. We are the same uh, family. And uh, just go into the word and uh, search the word. If it's not so, then just drop it. If it's so, then swallow your pride and do the necessary adjustment. Life is about uh, shifting our positions and shifting gears so we can come into complete alignment 
with the will of God, alignment with the word of God, alignment with the will of God, and alignment with the work of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But thanks uh, for serving alongside with us. Hallelujah. Amen. All right, so we're still in the year of our Lord 2022. We are in the month of July. Um, we are late today coming to you because uh, we're taking care of business. And uh, when we are enjoying the presence of the Lord, we are not in a hurry. Hallelujah. Amen. So that explains it. Okay, so uh, there's something going on that I wanted to address, but I'm not going to touch it today. Because our time is already uh, fast spent, so I can't touch it. But there's this issue going on about Titan and whatever. You know our position in this house, but I'll take the trouble to do it. Uh, but I'll say this to start with. Um, the first mention of Titan, or Titan was uh, by Abraham, in Genesis by Abraham and then Jacob. Right? And uh, it was to God. That's the first thing I want you to understand. When you give tithes, you give to God. You are not giving to any human being. Amen. Was God present? And he specifically standing there, literally, physically, receiving the tithe? No. But we know that whatever we give to God, there's always a human representation. Yeah. Somebody who stands in on behalf of God who takes it. Yes. All right? So the first thing, it was to God. Don't forget about that. Now, I know a lot of things have gone on in the body of Christ. And so we say, okay, I'm not going to give my money to any pastor. I'm not going to I work so hard. I'm not going to give my money to any fellow man. You know, they are going to do what they have to do with that and blah, blah, blah. Uh, I don't think you are quite right when you say it that way. It means that you are not in sync yet with the word of God. And then when Titan was incorporated or was commanded, in the case of Abraham, it was commanded. It was indirected. Abraham, out of his relationship, Jacob, the same, they gave to the Lord. No force, no compulsion. But when he came under the law in the, uh, in the Malachi, most people are, uh, what do you call they know that Malachi 3. In the law, it was commanded. So it's a must. You have to. And it came with consequences. You know, the law, when, when, when the law is the knowledge of sin. <laughs> Can you say amen to that? Amen. You are too quiet for my liking. Amen. I want you to be rowdy, you know. <laughs> now, with the law is the knowledge of sin. So law, do this. If you don't do it, you pay a heavy price for not doing it. Two of us. It's the same. I mean, everywhere. Law is law. You must be obeyed. If it's not obeyed, there are repercussions. Yeah. So that is why Malachi 3, let's have it there. So I will just take care of that and then we'll move on. Malachi 3, uh, from 8. It reads, Will a man rob God? Let's all read it. So, at least the record is straight. That you read it. Okay? So, read. Will a man rob God? Yet, you have robbed me. But you say, in what way have we robbed you in tithe and in offerings? So God starts by asking a question through the prophet Malachi that, okay, will somebody rob God? And then he answers, God speaking, yes, you have, you've done it, something that you have robbed me. Then it's like, okay, we are, the, the people then at that time, they were wondering, in what way, how, where did we see God? We never entered into God's house. We, we don't even know his house even on earth. You know, and we never stole anything from him. So we didn't rob him. But then uh, the prophet answers, God speaking to the prophet, in tithes and in offering. Tithe is things. That's all. And at that time when it was instituted, there were various kinds of tithes. All right? So here in this house, we do what we call, uh, we give to other ministries or we give because we believe in also giving. Okay? So we do that. When we started, and I didn't have much uh, knowledge about uh, this tithing thing, we used to call it tithe of tithes. Because even though the Levites received tithes, they were also to give tithes. Alright? So we're calling it that way. So from every donation received from this house, they were also giving uh, a tithe of it to various ministries that we felt led to give with, uh, to or help. Alright? 
Okay. So this is it. So you have robbed me in tithes and offering. Okay. So I want to specifically say this to you. So we rest it. This that we are talking about, when first we say, I don't want to address it, but I'm going there. When we when we talk about old covenant, or we talk about the old testament, it was a covenant. Testament is the same word as covenant. It was a covenant established between God and the Jews or the Israelites. When they came out of Egypt, is that going to say amen to that? Amen. Amen. Now, no Greek was part of that covenant. No Asian, no African, no whatever. I mean, Americans were not there to set the record straight. It was solely with the uh, people of Israel. Okay? That's why I want to read a. Uh, uh, Deuteronomy 28, for instance, and it says, if you hearken unto my word and you do all this, it says what? I will then uh, exalt you above all the nations. Have you seen that there before? You are looking at me strange. We'll come back to this. Let's go to Deuteronomy 28. And let's start from 1. Since most of you, that's where you go. There is a father you have said, if I obey you, I have obeyed you. And no wonder you are not seeing anything. Because you are dealing with the wrong covenant. <laughs> this covenant, you are not part of it. This is what we heard. Jesus said in Luke uh, 22, 20, this is the new covenant in my blood. That's the covenant that we belong to. Hallelujah. Not this one. It says, uh, let's read together. Read. Now it shall come to pass, if you diligently obey the voice of the Lord, your God, to observe carefully all his commandments and align all all his commandments. No son will. Hmm. All. Which I command you today that the Lord your God will do what? Will set you high above the na- all the nations of the earth. You see, so here who are some of the people of Israel, the nation of Israel, the nation of the Jews. So it says, this is unique. If you obey me, you follow me, this is what I'm going to do. I'll set you high above all the nations of the earth. This was not for us. And uh, Romans 3, 19 says, and we know that whatever the law says, it says to those under the law. We were not under the law because the church was not even yet birthed. Jesus had not died and he was not raised. He was not ascended. He was not seated at the right hand of God. So there was no church. It was purely the people of Israel. If you understand that, say amen. amen. And can you clap for me at least so I know I'm doing good. So if you keep looking at me and you are quiet and I'm thinking, am I doing it well or what? Hallelujah. So now let's go back to uh, the Malachi 3 that we're reading. I'm not, this is not what I'm going to teach. I'll shift gears along the line. But I want to settle the concerns that some people have. So, will a man rob God? So, people used to do this with preachers, especially. They will come offering time, then they say, Will a man rob God? They are robbers in the house of God, they are thieves in the house of God. They are stealing God's money because they are not giving their time and they are not giving their offerings. Have you heard that before? Mm-hmm. And that is the heavy one that they do. Next verse. This heavy one. You are cursed with the curse, for you have robbed me, even what? This whole nation. Do you see the cause phrase there? This whole nation. This whole nation. This whole nation. This whole nation. What nation is that? Israelites. Okay. For those who are still learning like us, let's hold it here and let's go to 1 Corinthians chapter 10, 32. Let me show you something there and then we'll come back to this, uh, what? Malachi 39. So, 1 Corinthians 10, 32. 32. 
three, two. Let's read together. Read. Give no offense either to what? The Jews or to the Greeks or to the church of God. All right. So the Bible from Genesis to Revelation has three classes of people, three groups of people, three categories. One, the Jews, the nation of Israel. The people that God started with, the covenant we're talking about, this, the Jews. The Greeks, another word for the Greeks is heathen. The other nations. There was the nation of Israel, there were other nations. They had no covenant with God, only the Jews. So the Greeks are referred to what? Heathen, Gentiles, other nations. Uh, let's, let's have a, another translation. So you see that. Let's see New Living Translation if it brings up. No, it doesn't. Let's look at uh, Amplified Version if it brings that up. Does it have it? No, it doesn't. Let's go back to the New Living Translation. I saw something. Oh, okay. So it was like, you guys didn't say it. And how come you didn't say it? I don't like that. <laughs> I told you Greeks. <laughs> class, class, class. Pay attention now. <laughs> uh, Greeks. The word Greeks stands for other nations, Gentiles, or the heathen. People who have no covenant with God. And so we saw this, the Gentiles was the enemies eight. You shouldn't draw the charges, right? <laughs> <laughs> Hallelujah. But okay, so that is the Gentiles. Okay? People who have no relationship with God at that time, under the Old Testament. That's what they were referring to. Then the, and the third group of people you see is what? Tell me. The church of God. So the Bible speaks to these three groups. I'll say that again. The Bible speaks. Each time you read anything from the Bible, to be a good Bible student, you have to find out to rightly divide the word of truth. According to 2 Timothy 2, what, 15, you have to always ask yourself the question, who is being addressed? Who is the audience here? Is it the Jews, the nation of uh, Israel? Or is it uh, Gentiles, the Greek? Or is it the church, the body of Christ? In the same way, people started talking about curse, 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 curse. Generational curse, generational curse. They never talk about generational blessing. Even the way they were picking up the generational curse, there was generational blessing there, but they never touched it. Why? Because people are sin conscious. Suffering kind of conscious. Because when we're growing up, we were not exposed to, uh, what should I call it? Pleasure, leisure. They think when you're having fun, you're sinning. You have to be in pain. That means you are holy. You have to struggle. Then you are pleasing God. Oh Lord Jesus. So you see three. Alright? So what we're reading about in Malachi has nothing to do with the church. It has nothing to do with the Gentiles or the Greeks. But has has not been preaching the church for years, years, for what centuries, for decades. Wrong teaching. These are some of the wrong things that have gone on in the church. Have I taught that before? Yes. Because I grew up in it. I was taught that way. Till my eyes open. Okay, let's go back to the Malachi 3 9. I know somebody is saying, Wow, so happy Pastor is touching this. Now I don't have to give uh, my any portion of my paycheck anymore. You are wrong. You are supposed to give more than even the 10%. I'll get to that place. I'm setting you up so you know that the 10% is nothing. So if you think you've been giving 10% down, oh, I give my 10% to my church, I give 10% to God. Some people don't want to they'll give the 10%. So when it comes to offering, then they give a dollar. But he said you have brought me in what? Tithes and in offerings. So offering is different from free will. It's different from what? The what? Tithe was a specific amount. Offerings, just do as you are. 
So based on your relationship with God, how God is good to you, how you see God, yeah. it's what moves you right. to just give to him yeah. or to give to his work. Yeah. The work of God must be supported. Yeah. You understand? Yeah. In, the, in, in those times, okay, let me not go ahead. Let, let, let's go to the next verse. Verse 10. So they say you are cursed. No, let me, I think let me debunk this first, the curse aspect. Go, yeah, okay. If you are born again, if you are a son, a child of God, you are not cursed. You are blessed. Galatians 3, 13 says that, for Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law. The curse of the law. When you disobey the law at that time, you come under a curse. But Christ came to what? Redeem us from the curse of the law. That's why he fulfilled the law. So he can redeem us from the curse of the law. And let's common sense, common sense. So God now refers to you as his child. You are washed by the blood of Jesus Christ. You genuinely believe that Jesus is the Messiah and you are saved, you are born again. God tells you that now you are in my kingdom. You are joined up with Jesus Christ. Then, okay, but because you refuse to, this is how they say, to pay your tithes, oh, and now I curse you. Common sense. I curse you. Oh, now I was even living in you by way of my, my spirit, but now because you are cursed, I'm going to jump out of you. I can't live in you anymore. Until you pay all your tithes, and then I'll come back and live in you. It doesn't make sense. Whoever God has blessed, no man can curse. Amen. Nobody has power to reverse whatever God has done. Amen. You cannot. In, in, in Romans 11 29, it says the gifts and the callings of God are irrevocable. Under the new covenant, when He blesses you, that's why you can see people, they are fooling around, they are ugly, they are mean, but still the power of God works through them. Why? Because God doesn't retract, okay? Withdraw his words or the blessing he pronounced upon you. Oh, I didn't know that along the line you are going to go off. When you see the manifestation of my power in your life, you are going to go off. So now I'm changing my mind. And I'm taking my gift back. So everybody will see you that it was my gift, not yours. He doesn't do that. All right? So in the same way, when he has blessed you, nobody can curse you. Why am I saying this today? Because some people believe in the power of curse. Curse is in the Bible. It works, right? But if you are blessed by God, no man on this earth, no voodoo priest, not any dangerous magician, whatever, witch doctor, witch wizard can cast any spell upon you and work. It won't work. They can try, but it won't work. But you say, well, I know somebody, that thing was done to them. Yeah, because the person believed. They didn't know what I'm sharing now. That you are so protected, so covered by the blood, by the power of God, yeah. you cannot be cursed. But they believed wrongly that somebody can do them something and it will succeed. So that's why. Because you attract what you think. You attract what you think. And as a man thinks in his heart, so is he. Job said, the thing that I greatly feared has come upon me. Instead of uh, trusting God and knowing his word is at work, then he was always thinking about the negative thing. And that's what he got. Do you get it? Okay. So if, uh, what, um, what does it Galatians 3, uh, 13 says, he redeemed us from the curse of God because he became a curse for us. That 14 says that the blessing of Abraham might come upon us. And we have received that blessing because we are genuinely what born again. We are genuinely accepting Jesus Christ as the Lord and Savior. So the next verse, this doesn't hold. Pastors have used this to intimidate people, to trick them, to manipulate them, to give. And uh, if you have realized, some of you can say that since you joined this house, I've never stood here to quote this thing to you, that you have to give your time, you don't give your curse. We are to honor the Lord with our substance. You see, to start with, He owns you, He bought you. He owns you. The ability to make money, He gave to you. 
the life to go get the money he gave to you. So it's just proper to honor him, to adore him, to worship him. You see, the way God takes care of his project on this earth is through us, through people who make money. And you have to bring some of the money you have made so the project can be taken care of. Period. So if you look at the size of the prophet and the project, and you look at what God has blessed you with and what you are giving, you have to ask yourself, can what I'm giving be enough to take care of the projects of God? Can that advance the cause of the kingdom? You have to ask yourself that. Do you get it? That's what we said. Under the new covenant, we serve a God of abundance. And everything that God does for us in abundance. So giving should be what? In abundance. Giving is no force. That is why when you read the new covenant, it says that. Um, okay, let me finish this and I'll go there. Let's go to 10. 10, are we there? Is that 10? Okay. It says, uh, bring all the tithes to my what? Storehouse. So here again, the tithe, it says, you have robbed me. So if you even think about it, still you are giving to God. Giving to God should be key to you. I tell you all I'm giving, like a, a lottery or gambling, you put the, your coin in the, what do you call it? The jackpot, you know, the slot, the machine, so you are getting something back. No, I'm going to this casino, I have this $100, mm -hmm. and I put over the $100. I'm going to use the jackpot, and I'm going to get something. See, so we've been using God like that. We give to God based on love. Yeah. You know, not to get something from Him. You understand? Yeah. For God so loved the world, finish it for me, that He gave. He so loved that He gave. Now, I'll say this to you. You've never heard it before. Tell, you something, tell the person, what pastor is going to say you've never heard it before? Giving to the Lord is one key way you measure the work of love in a person's life. If that person doesn't give to God on the wavelengths that they are supposed to, the way they love is the same. If you give your all to God, when you love people, you are going to love all the way. Like Jesus said, love one another just as I have loved you. Jesus love all. Why are you not saying that? I'll say it again. Jesus love, now you are thinking about yourself. Don't think about, think about Jesus. I'll come to you. Just remember to say it. Jesus love what? All the way. Come on, this is wicked man. God doesn't accept that. Me, I don't even accept it. Uh -uh. God, Jesus, He loved all the way. Amen. We are getting there one more time. Jesus loved all the way. Amen. That's better. Put your hands together for yourselves. Amen. You see, for God so loved, He He did His best. In the same way, when you are dealing with people, you do the best. You go all the way. No holding back. No holding back. No reservation. All. Complete. Total. Full. Hallelujah. Amen. That's what we ought to do. Amen. Do you get it? Yeah. That's what we ought to do. Yay, 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 yay. So when you are giving to God, it's the same way. When you are giving... I like giving words. I can't speak in tongues too. Because if I speak in tongues, you don't understand. I like words to describe the way we have to give to God. But that reminds me in 2 Corinthians chapter 8, where it says some folks were, in even in their deep poverty, they gave and beyond their ability. That is it. When you are giving to God, you give all the way. When you love people, you love what? All the way. Amen. The standard. He has raised the standard. Amen. What did he say? Love one another as that's it. Now, some people are still in the Old Testament, another old. 
So they say things like, ah, but the Bible even says, so love your neighbor as yourself. Me, myself, I don't like myself. I don't love myself 100%. I love myself 60%. So that's how I do with people. People can be dangerous. You can't trust anybody. Blah, blah, blah. Am I right? Uh huh. So that's what we do. But God wants you to get rid of your fear. He wants you to get rid of those negative concerns. Don't focus on the people's response, but focus on his instruction to you. He says, love. He didn't say, check the person out. Oh, this one, if I love them fully, they are going to take me for granted. So some people, if you the advice, when they are going to marry, marry, they say, oh, when you go love this man, love this one, 50%. You never know. These things, people are very unfaithful. So if they, in case they decide to break your heart, you have 50 to hold on to. You know, you can do something with the 50. 50%. You are so sure. You are walking and you are half naked and you didn't know. 50%. Who dresses half naked and goes to town? Have you seen that before? No. All the way. We are still talking about giving. If the way you've been giving has not changed, then you are stuck in the old. You are not yet in the new. Have you realized that we always want God when He's going to give to us? We want the top, the top notch, the best. But when we are trying to do something for God, ah, we throw in some change, right? Anything. The way we use our ability, the way we use our strength, the way we use everything that we have is just, you know. We want something for ourselves. We want the best. Something looking great, something cute. By the of God, God, you can't see God living is not the natural, is after all, you know, then we do something. No. When you understand His love, you see, what kicks in is called the spirit of excellence. The spirit of excellence doesn't allow you to be mediocre, it doesn't allow you to be average. He, he gives that spirit empowers you to do everything to the best of your ability. Hallelujah. Amen. Have you seen that there are anything anyhow Christians in town? Do you know one like that? You may be looking at no, not in this church. Mm. Hallelujah. Mm. So it says what well, what? <laughs> Bring it to my storehouse, not your house. Some people the first thing they do is save. Because financial advisors told them that when you get your paycheck save. Who gave you the power to go work in the first place? Who gave you the job opportunity? They are thinking about saving. Acknowledge him first. Yeah. Hallelujah. Amen. That there may be meat or food in my storehouse. And then what? Mm. And try me now in this. This has been preached over and over. You bombarded people. That's not okay. Says the Lord of hosts. If you will not, what? Open the if I will not what? open the windows of heaven and pour out for you such blessing that there will not be room enough to receive. And then the other side is if you don't do this, what will happen? The devourer will come. So they say, if you don't pay your tithes, you are cursed. Your dishwasher will break down. Your sewing machine will break down. Your what? Uh, your sink will be caught, uh, your roof will be leaking, and uh, these people are going to take your money. All those things, uh, it's not in the book. God is not that wicked. All covenant, you don't come and that. that. You see, when you read this, you're already blessed. That's why He took you from the kingdom of darkness, according to Colossians, Colossians chapter 1, 1 13. And then He brought you into the, in the kingdom of dear son. He says, You are family with God. And you are not blessed. Amen. If you have a curse, you can't even come close to the gate of God. <laughs> because the God is like, you can't come close. Hallelujah. You'll be far away. But you are not family with God. You are a child of God. You are chapter with Jesus Christ. You are blessed. Amen. So when you give, you are not giving that some blessing 
or recognition from God will come upon you, or some acceptance from God will come. He's a, he has already accepted you. And he's already blessed you. He's already empowered you to represent him here. The spirit of abundance is upon you. The Bible says, you know uh, how rich Jesus was, but for our sake he became what? Poor. According to 2 Corinthians 8 and 9, that we through his poverty might become rich. So he's given it to you. Hallelujah. Amen. So, what am I talking about all this? People are giving tithes and they haven't seen anything. For years. I know. Because we're told when you give, God will open these windows, the blessing that is going to come. We've been looking forward for the plenty of money. We've never seen it. Have you seen it before? Because what he's talking about is not like that. And we are operating under the wrong covenant. When you give, you receive. It's true. He it says what? Whatever a man sows, that shall he reap. So there's a law of uh, sowing and reaping. So that is true. When you give out of love, not out of compulsion, the Bible says, you have to decide, you know, what you have to give. According to 2 uh, Corinthians chapter 9, uh, verses 6 through 8. And then when you come to uh, 2 Corinthians uh, 8, 12, it says, according to what you have, you give according to what you have. That should determine what you give. What you have should determine what you give. In 1 Corinthians 16, 1, it talks about make sure that according to the blessing of the Lord upon your life, put something aside that when I come, I don't have to take uh, the offering. So we we'll have to give to others. When you realize this, when uh, tithes, offerings were taken, it was not just uh, for the uh, pastor to pocket and put it in his bank account. No. The portion in the Old, Old Testament was going to the pastor, it was going to will, it was going to those in need. And then when we come, i finish this. Wow. You see how good a lot. When it comes to um, Acts chapter 2, let's go there. Is it Acts chapter 2? Acts chapter 4. Uh, verse 46. I'm trying to learn. Acts chapter 4, verse 46. Now, you don't have 46. 42, or is it chapter 2 that I'm dealing with? How many said even when I said Acts chapter 4, verse 46? <laughs> <laughs> this is what I'm saying. I don't study your way. <laughs> Acts chapter 2, 42. <laughs> what do you have? <laughs> uh, okay, so this is what I'm this is what I'm looking for. <laughs> this one. 36, 436. Okay, let's go to. Uh, let's back up. Thirty-four. Okay, now the multitude. I love that. Let's read this. So, Acts, Acts chapter four, verse thirty-two. That's what I was saying. You guys, you heard forty-six. No one that was in the Bible. <laughs> you know, I'm joking. <laughs> okay, so Acts chapter four, verse thirty-two. Let's read together. Read. Really. Now, the multitude of those who believe, believe what? Those who believe to start with what Peter was preaching on the day of Pentecost and what apostles continue to preach. Yeah. This is fresh manner, fresh message, yeah. new covenant message. When Jesus has been raised and he was ascended and seated on the right hand of God, when the church of God was birthed, the New Testament church in Acts chapter 2, all right? So those who believe were of one world heart. Is that where we are today? It's so sad. What we are doing? We created denominations. And denominations are against one another. Of one heart and one soul. Neither did anyone say that any of the things he possessed, he possessed was his own. But they had all things in common. Do you get it? They had all things in common. Now, is that what we do? Oh, I want to drive a car. I don't know. My class is different. I don't want to drive the cars that these guys are driving. I don't want to live in a home where, you know. And they walk around like they, their feet cannot be touched the ground. You know, they are feeling themselves. They are full of it. And then they want everybody to come to them and beg. You understand know what I'm saying? No. If you're a child of God, you don't have to wait for somebody to come ask you. You have eyes. You have the Holy Spirit. When you know somebody 
has need of something, then you have what it takes. Minister to that person. The Bible says, do good, especially to those of the those of the household of faith. That's Galatians 6 10. Do good. Do good. Minister to those people. Hallelujah. But we don't do that. Now let's go to the next verse. And let's see what happened. Hmm. And with great power, the apostles gave witness to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus. They were not teaching Moses. They were not teaching about the law. And great grace was upon them all. Let's see. Let's read on. If we, if we, if we don't get it. Uh, what is it? Nor was there anyone among them who lacked. Do you see it now? Nobody lacked. By the church of God, I'm looking at this congregation now, and we can tell that there's a need. If you agree with me, say amen. Because some people have the money, they are holding it. They are not releasing it. Stretch on your hands towards the person and say, release it, release it. <laughs> we are having fun, hallelujah. For all who were possessors of lands or what? Houses, sold them and brought the proceeds of the things that were sold. You see? Now, I'm not saying go sell your house. Especially if you have married, you have to them. I'm not saying. <laughs> no, that's not what I'm saying. Hallelujah. This is some kind of um, example what the Lord can lay on somebody's heart, prompt you to do. Right. Hallelujah. Amen. Now, I don't believe that if you don't have food to eat and then you still have to come and give your money to God or whatever. And God doesn't want that. Hallelujah. So why is that? Okay, next verse. They sold it and what happened? And laid them at the apostles' feet and they distributed to each as anyone had need. So you see where the money was going? It wasn't for the pastor to pocket it. It was taking care of people. And when you read through all that or, or New Testament, that's what it is. The giving is taking care of people. Is that what the church is doing now? No, there's this aspect that, okay, uh, for instance, the uh, New Testament church were meeting homes. Now we can't meet in homes. You don't even want me to come to your home. I come there five minutes, you say, you are saying your head. Now you have, you have, uh, I'll leave your whatever, welcome. If so, I stay your welcome. Pastor, you have to know you have to go. And then somehow I'll get a message. And then I'll say, okay, good to be here. Good to see you. I'll see you another day, right? The guy drove the pastor out. So how many people, <laughs> hey, hey, don't sit on this my couch. Do you know how much I bought it for? People can come into your house and have a lunch. But that's what they were doing. But now we meet in uh, auditoriums, like we are here. This must be paid for, even if it's rented. It must be paid for. There's electric bill, there's water bill, there's uh, what? Other bills that must be taken care of, right? So, okay, who is going to take care of that? God? No, 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 no. It's you. You, the member. If you belong to a society, you belong to any uh, organization, People pay dues and whatever, right? Even the gym that you uh, you are member of, you pay, you know, some money monthly. Am I right? Yeah. It's the same way. Progress must be done. Vision, what God has given to the house to be done, must be funded. And it takes the people to be financially what? Committed, responsible to do that. Mm -hmm. Knowing that you have to give for whatever it is to be taken care of. And that's it. Nobody has to force you. It's based on understanding. Nobody has to coerce you. It's based on understanding. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. The pastor, like I'm talking before, you look at how I'm talking. You know, you want me to finish and then you don't give me anything as paycheck. What? I mean, I've been talking. I have to eat at this. You don't give me anything. Oh, why are you quiet? <laughs> <laughs> so part of the giving is to take care of the spiritual leader. It's not changed. It's in the New Testament. So we do just that. Hallelujah. Amen. So when you are giving, don't give with this thing that, oh, if I don't give my tithes, I'll be cursed. No, in the New Testament, it's higher than the 10%. Do you get it? It's higher than the 10%. If law was 10%, 
Can you imagine? I'm asking myself this question. If 10% was not written, how much do you think people in the Israel will give to the Lord? Have you thought about that? How, how many people? Because I've known, I mean, since I became a believer, and since pastoring and whatever, I've known people who don't give their time. They don't. It's not like they don't receive income. They do, but they don't give. And that is not going to change. Well, this is not based on force. It's based on love and understanding. That's it. Hallelujah. Amen. So I can't come here and study and scare people. And then uh, some pastors, they do some fake uh, prophecies. I see there's going to be a turnaround, seven days turnaround as you give today. No, I'm not going to do that. You see, what are we doing in this house? When there's a project, let's say we need to buy a microphone, we need to buy a PA system. I'll say, no, we need to buy this, we need to buy that. It's going to cost us this, and then people should give towards it. So we have the right as spiritual leaders to come up with, uh, what do you call it? Rally people around a common goal so people can give towards it. And that is still biblical. You see, because in the early church, they did that. The pastors, true leaders, they have the right to do that. And that's it. But unfortunately, there's been abuse in the system, and that is what is not good. Don't let the abuse keep you from doing what is right in the sight of God. Amen. Do you get it? Jesus is our high priest now. So when we are even giving, we are giving to Jesus, our high priest, who laid down his life for us. When we are yes sins, he died for us. You see, at times you say, oh, this person is not like that. Mm, I don't want to have anything to do with that person. Jesus didn't say that. He looked at us and he helped us. Amen. Amen. I didn't know I was going to go all this route to do all this. But don't be stingy because the spirit that is on you is not stinginess. Do you get it? That's not the spirit that is upon you. So don't do that. Hallelujah. <clears throat> Somebody saw me tipping somebody and they were shocked. They were saying, like, it's too much or whatever. To them, they wouldn't even tip the person. And I understand when somebody is not born again, I understand. But if you are born again and your heart doesn't move you to give to people, not just money, but to give to people, your time, your whatever, then I don't know what kind of spirit is driving you. Something was done here so beautiful. When uh, our dear brother Angel Max, I, I was told because that's the testimony the person gave to me. They were getting ready to get uh, something organized for him in connection with it to commemorate his 70th birthday. But people from this house jumped and they took care of everything, they footed the meal. That's what I'm talking about. They were not asked to do it, they decided to do it. You know, and that's one of the reasons God gives us the means, gives us the money. It's not just to use it on ourselves. Hallelujah. It's beautiful. This person is so touched because he didn't expect that. This is a mark that is made of the person that will never be erased. And I always say that when someone is in need, that's the time that when you help, it registers. We have to think about how to be a blessing to people. Don't just say, I'm blessed to be a blessing. I'm blessed to be a blessing. How are you a blessing? You're saying it. How are you a blessing? Be a blessing indeed. This was wonderful. Like our whatever boiler broke down on us. We didn't have a what, uh, what was the cost of this uh, thing at all? Was it a uh, so, 17, okay, plus the AC or whatever, um, the K2, whatever, whatever. But we're looking more than 20,000. We couldn't eat because we had no heat. Lo and behold, a family said, We are going to give you the money that you need, no interest, 
And you just take your time and pay as you go. That's what I'm talking about. If you all broke people, and we didn't have that money, I thought we were going to say, I'll say it again. If we all broke people, and we didn't have money, and we're all stingy, this, this somebody could have said, oh, I don't even want, they, they, you know, when we're meeting, we're having meetings on this, uh, talking about how to do it. They could have been like Ananias and Sapphira. Oh, Pastor, you know, we, we can just offer uh, what, this amount. If people can give these toys and then we all can, you know, some people have the money. We are willing. But, you know, God is starting you to give the whole amount. Then you are saying, I'm going to give this portion. Some other people should just contribute and whatever. That's what some church people do. Say amen. amen. It's not good. And some people, they look for opportunity to do something so everybody will know that, yeah, I did it, I did it. No, you are in the wrong business. I remember some years ago, years ago, this happened to me. Is it a good thing? Should I say that? Should I say it? Some people came to me and they said, oh, pastor, we want you to, uh, we want to take care of uh, you, you know, to have a nice haircut. So we are ready for a barber for you. That's cheap. That's cheap. Pay for my car. Pay for my car. Don't give me pennies. Don't give me cheap money change. Pay for my car. Haircut. And this is more than one person coming together. No, I applaud them for the thought of it. But this is what they do to keep pastors in poverty. To keep them humble. Let's just give him just enough to keep him humble. And I'll say it. I bought a high-end car, and then you could see the what was in the heart of some. Pastor is driving a high-end car. Oh, it's my title, my offer. It's my contribution. Uh, I'm not going to give you anymore. If I'm here, I'll feel guilty. I have to give. So I'm going out to another church. I don't care. Go. If God put you here to take care of me and you run away, God will still follow you. He knows where you are. <laughs> I'm just joking. <laughs> he will still take care of me. I saw my mom did this single-handedly. She would stand before the congregation and ask people to do something for the pastor. She single-handedly was clothing the pastor, feeding the pastor, giving the pastor money. But some people, they want the pastor to come and beg. They have the money, oh. <laughs> they don't see the pastor. They don't see him. The pastor will have to come and say, oh, you know, I'm a bit tight. Can, uh, can you help me out or whatever before? That is not good. You know your pastor needs money, don't you? Who doesn't need money here? Wait, when I become a millionaire, I'll tell you. So I'll take your money anymore. But now that I'm not there, I'll take your money. Does it make sense? I told you, I'm looking forward to a day. I won't take anything from this house. That's my goal. You see, but I've not, I've not been called to go and do business. So no. So I'm not going to find some business. No. I'm not like other pastors. Don't say, but pastors, there are some pastors and they are doing business. So why don't you do? No, no, please don't pray that way for me. I'm not going. This is what he called me to do. And that's what I'm going to do. Hallelujah. Amen. To train people to equip them, and that's what I will do. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. You see, so when you are giving, when you are in a house like this, you love the fact that it's beautiful. We see some other houses and say, wow, it's nice. Have you seen their facility? Have you seen their complex? Have you seen that? Do you think it came from heaven? People gave. I know in some cases, people who mortgage their what do you call it? Uh, their homes and stuff like that. And do you know that my wife and I, we had to mortgage our house before we bought this building? And that Ricky is here. If I'm telling a lie, he's an accountant too. He can speak. We have to mortgage. You see, at times, we just don't understand the necessity, the significance the importance of our financial contribution. I've come to a place 
When people come to me, you know, know what I'm going to say, forgive me before I say it. Forgive me. Am I forgiving before I say it? When people come to me and say, Pastor, I'm praying for you, I don't like that. When you come, come with an envelope, they'll say, Amen. 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 <laughs> That's a huge prayer. <laughs> Where is it, all these things coming from? Straight for your hands, though. It's me. <laughs> Hallelujah. My mom might say some of these things. You know, people have been religious this way. You know, people have been religious this way. And, you know, pastors who are genuine to they don't speak up. Because they don't want to bring attention to themselves. They don't want to say any slightest thing that will give you the, you know, inclination or idea that, oh, you see, I'm trying to tell you directly that, no, give me something. Give me something. I'm suffering. Give. No, they don't want to do that. Hallelujah. But we have the Holy Spirit. And if everybody is doing what they ought to do, have mercy, have mercy, Lord. Nobody will be suffering. No pastor will suffer. I'm telling you, there's enough in every local assembly to take care of the pastor, to take care of uh, the vision and the whole house, to take the care of the people in the house. You know, we also are supposed to be taking care of, after a certain age, they are supposed to be taking care of their families cannot take care of them. But what is going on? Some don't want to do that. Some don't want to do that. And that is not nice. I'm happy this house is different. Hallelujah. I'm happy. Oh, do I mean it's like, how would the people online know that? Yes, they are different. I said this. <laughs> this house is different. Hallelujah. I was talking to somebody and I was saying some things and they were surprised. You know, for for this house to sponsor my wife and I to do missions, that's huge. That is huge. I don't I don't take it for granted. You know, because I know in some houses they complain. You see, this is part of the vision, like I'm saying, it's part of what we are called to do. And when we go, this is where we're going. We go to take our business. It's not vacation. See, so if the mindset is not right, then your financial work commitment will be affected. Hallelujah. I'm all I'm just asking you to be responsible financially. Just like you take care of your house, you have to take care of this house financially by your giving. That is important. God has given us something to do. It takes some money. Do you know that even Jesus looked after eight and uh, three? He says that there were people who were sponsoring Jesus. He could do what he did because people decided to help him out. And that's one of the reasons why you are here. So think about doing, going beyond. I'll close in uh, uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 8. I wanted to shoot straight to the verse. Okay, so let's go to verse 6. Then we'll read verse 7 too. Verse 6, 2 Corinthians 8, 6. So we heard Titus that um, as he had what? Begun, so he would also what? Complete this grace in you as well. What grace is he talking about? Giving. We were then that money. Okay, next verse. But as you abound in what? Everything. As you are selling everything. One of these is what? In faith, you have to grow in grace too. In speech, you have to grow. In knowledge, you have to grow. In all diligence, you have to grow. And in your what? In your what? Love. So we have to grow in love. So if your love has been 60% all these years, what is going to shift? You're asking the government to increase the uh, what, what? minimum what? Minimum wage. But if you are not shifting gears, shift gears so the government can shift. Shift! The government can shift! Amen. Hallelujah! Yeah. Hmm. <laughs> Your love is still the same. Mm -hmm. See that you, you abound in this grace also. Yeah. Excel in the grace of giving. Amen. Yeah. That's all. Yeah. Excel in the grace yeah. of giving. We cannot outgive God. Yeah. But you have to excel. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. 
No wife should complain. I'm not having uh, what enough uh, affection for my husband. I'm not having enough time with my husband. The quality time with my husband. He works, 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 works. works. He works, works, works. Is it works or works? Back when we used to say works. You know, when you are trying to uh, convince a lady to follow you, you know, to fall for you, you works, you works the lady. You know, so works, works, you're working. And your time with the work is more than your time with your uh, wife. That is not correct. Wives, that don't think about their husbands. They think more about kitchen affairs. You know why when you get to the kitchen, everything in the kitchen must say salute them before they leave. <laughs> they will go, 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 clean the whole house too. And then neglect the, 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 the husband. You know what I'm talking about, right? Okay, you don't know this, so that's okay. Let me, let me close. <laughs> what I'm saying is we have to excel to do quality stuff. The way we love people, the way we keep to people. That's all. That's all. For some of you to start with a call, just in a week, call somebody. That's it. In a week. Two weeks. If a week is too much, start with two weeks by weekly. Call somebody out of the blue. Oh, sister, brother, I'm just calling to check on you. Don't just get up and go, 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 like a button is pushed. Go, 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 run all around town, and then you get home, you are tired, you sleep, and then you wake up again. No. That's not it. Hallelujah. Anyway, my time is up. Amen. So I didn't talk about my message. That's fine. You guys will pray how I'm getting it. That's sense. So that does it for uh, today. I'm happy at least I was able to share to you about this uh, uh, tight kind of um, controversies. All right. So start from the limit. Well, Jesus, the anointed one has made you free. Do not again entangle with the yoke of bondage, but by love, serve one another. Love you guys. Hallelujah.